Hello students, welcome back to the accounts class. In this video, we will be solving a past exam question from the May 2021 Paper 2 exam. Here it is, question number four. It says, the following information relates to Bevan, a production line worker for the month of May 2021. Payroll information for Bevan, Total number of hours worked for the month, 185 hours. Statutory monthly deduction, $190. Voluntary monthly deduction, $200. National insurance deduction per month, $120. Regular pay rate per hour, $20. Overtime pay rate for, per hour, time and a half. Total number of hours in a regular week is 40 hours. And you are to assume that four weeks make up one month. Now, part A, 1, asks you to calculate the total number of hours, total number of regular hours which Bevan worked for the month. Now, remember that the month has four weeks and the total regular hours in a week is 40 hours. Therefore, the total number of regular hours that Bevan worked is arrived at by simply multiplying the number of hours by the number of weeks in the month. So there's your answer, 160 hours. And that part of the question carries two marks, so you shouldn't spend more than, say, three minutes doing that part of the question. Now, the second part of the question asks you to calculate the total number of overtime hours which Bevan worked for the month of May. Now, total overtime worked is equal to the total hours worked minus total regular hours. So that would be 185 hours, the total number of hours he worked for the month, minus the total number of hours in a regular month. So that would be 185 minus 160 hours. So Bevan worked a total of 25 hours overtime. And again, that carries two marks. Now, part three of the question says, using the information provided in the table on page 16 and your answers from parts A, 1 and 2, calculate Bevan's net pay for the month of May 20. 21. Now, net pay is equal to gross pay minus total deductions, and gross pay is equal to regular pay plus overtime pay. And of course, pay is equal to hours worked times rate. Now, the regular pay is equal to the number of regular hours worked times the pay rate. That's $160, 160 hours times $20, which is $3,200. The overtime pay is 25 hours of overtime multiplied by time and a half. So time and a half works out to be $30, $30 per hour, and 25 hours of overtime was worked. So that's a total of... Now remember that gross pay is equal to regular pay plus overtime pay. So that is $3,200 regular pay plus $750 overtime pay, giving you a total of of $3,950. Now the total deductions, remember, 
The deductions were statutory monthly deductions of $190, voluntary monthly deductions of $200, and national insurance deduction of $120. So, total deductions were $510. And so, the net pay for the month for Bevan was a total of 3440 that is the regular pay minus the total deductions and that carried four marks so no more than six minutes for that part of the question part b one says state one example of a statutory deduction Statutory deductions are amounts that the law requires to be taken from the gross pay. For example, income tax, which is also called payee, national insurance, which is social security. And in Jamaica, we also have national housing trust and education tax. That part of the question only carries one mark, so it does not require a lot of writing. And the same thing with part two. State one example of a voluntary deduction. Voluntary deductions are amounts that the employee asks to be taken out of their gross pay. For example, loan repayments, union dues, life insurance premiums, health insurance. Again, not a lot of writing. It's just one mark. Okay, John, the proprietor of Foot Soles, a business with trades in shoes, has supplied the cash projections data shown on page 18. So here is the data on page 18. And you're given some additional information. It says, Foot Soles forecast that the bank balance will be 5,000 on the 1st of May. 2020. You are to prepare the cash flow projections for foot soles for the six months ending October 2021 and by calculating and completing the appropriate spaces in the form provided. You are to include all appropriate headings and labels, fill in necessary totals, include any missing sections for the completion of a cash flow statement. So let's put in the heading and I'm going to go ahead and put in the different sections. So here's your heading and remember you're getting a, you're getting mark for it. You're getting a mark for your heading. So make sure it is stated correctly. Now the top part of your cash flow projection will show the inflows of cash you're going to show the total inflows the bottom half of your projection will show the outflows that is the money that you expect to spend during the month and you will also show the total outflows for the month what you expect to spend now, the way you will do your cash flow projection is to start with your opening bank balance to which you will add the total of your cash inflows to see the expected amount of cash that will be available for you to spend. Then from that, you will take the total outflows to see how much cash you will have remaining at the end of the month. That amount that you have remaining will be taken to the beginning of the next month and you repeat the process. So there it is. We have put in all the appropriate headings and labels for the different sections. Now let's put in the necessary totals. We are going to add up the total inflows for the month of May. So that's a total of $45,000. The total outflows for the month of May. That is a total of $28,000. And remember 
they told us that there was an opening bank balance of let's see how much that was five thousand dollars on the first of may now we are going to add to that balance the total inflows of forty five thousand dollars to give you a total of fifty thousand and from that we're going to take the total outflows of twenty eight thousand and that will give you a balance of twenty two thousand dollars okay so at the end of may we have a balance of twenty two thousand dollars that will be taken to the beginning of june and to that we're going to add the total inflows so the total inflows for june is thirty two thousand dollars the total outflows for june is twenty four thousand dollars And when you add the total inflows of 32,000 to the amount that that is coming from the previous month, you get a total of 54,000. And from that you're going to take the total outflows of 24,000 to leave a balance in the bank of thirty thousand that thirty thousand is the amount you're going to start the month of july with and you repeat the process you add up the total inflows for the month of july you add up the total outflows for the month of july you add the total inflows to the balance that you're starting with and you repeat the process yes so here we are at the end of September with a closing bank balance of 23,000 and that will be taken to the beginning of October and the process is repeated we add up the total inflows 31,000 we add up the total outflows 20,000 the total inflows is added to the opening bank balance at the start of the month that is 31,000 so that gives you a total of 54,000 from that you take the total outflows of 20,000 and you're left with closing bank balance of $34,000. So, this is your cash flow projection for foot soles for the six months ending 31 October 2021. We have included all appropriate headings and labels. We have filled in the necessary totals and we have included all the missing sections that part of the question was for 10 marks so you shouldn't take more than 15 minutes to do that part of the question so i'll see you in the next video bye